Okay, I ran a new wire. Um, I might want to increase that gauge at one point, but it is the gauge that was on here um, to the back of the alternator. Probably going to reuse this cap. I'm just going to cut it open, or I'll find something kind of like it to you know to keep that shielded from uh, weather. And I ended up tying that in. Here, I'll go over. I ended up tying that into the black wire that had that fusible link on it, which went through the firewall. And, um, you know, that was the wire that was ultimately burned out. I didn't put the fusible link back here. I put it more toward the front, and we'll see it in a sec. So this is all a part of the normal wiring harness. I'm not super happy with this crimp here. I might redo that one. I bought some uh, better um, uh, non-covered units that I think I want to weatherproof that a bit better. I did run uh, wire through the firewall there, and ultimately that goes back to what would have been the ammeter, but I'm going to bypass that and uh, clamp it all down. So here's the fusible link, or one of them. Um, I wrote on there fuse link, but even with permanent marker, there's too much grease in here, so... Sorry. Yeah, even with the uh, permanent marker, it's not going to work on there. I'll print a label probably, but you can see the difference there. The, so this this is meant to burn out before the whole system does, right? And that's kind of what uh, that's kind of what happened in the failure. Here. Uh, I did build a new red here for the uh, go to the ignition solenoid to the uh, battery because that was that cable was old. Here's the other fusible link that goes back into the dash, and uh, that's where we're going to tie it all together. So this is the bypass method. Uh, this is kind of the Chrysler fix for the wires melting down at the bulkhead connector. And I'm just about ready. I'll, I'll take you inside for a sec. This is a little bit budge, um, but I do want to get this all connected together uh, just in order to make sure I got electrical at all, headlights and low voltage stuff and then I'll give it a, an attempt later but uh, for now this hasn't been tightened down yet but I'm gonna make this little bridge here that, that basically taking the two wires that were off the back of the ammeter and merging it with that wire I put through the uh, um, the firewall that goes right to uh, I'm not gonna bolt everything like even when I put the dash back in I'm not gonna bolt everything together it's not gonna be a final it's just gonna make sure that I've uh, successfully route around whatever um, was uh, burning so anyway, that's it uh, for uh, this segment. Yeah, so there's a couple of light gauge wires under the dash here that someone had already taped up. Just twisted them together and taped it. So here's the thing. There's always a right way, a wrong way, and a stupid way. This is kind of in between. But rather than just me twisting those together, which I've already done, and then just taping over it like it already was, um, I know there's not a high amperage, or it's, it's not a high voltage, high amperage wire. So that's that's cool. It's sending sig it's a signal wire rather than a power carrier. But I do have these little end caps here, which are ordinarily where if you had a, I guess if you had just even a hot or neutral wire hanging that you might put the wire in here, crimp it, shrink it on, and then um, it's kind of an end cap, you know. But it still will also do if it's low voltage. You can't, you don't, you don't want to use something this small necessarily to, you know, do any kind of bit large shit because it's not meant for that. But when combining two wires, twist it together, put this on crimp, you get a little bit of best of both, sort of. It's a total uh, cheat, but for this kind of thing, I like it because it actually shields it and it's better than just a tape, right? All right, I think that that is not only as bitchin as could be, but is as bitchin as it can be. It's a big difference. Man, oh. the more I look, the more I see. Okay. 
Yeah, there's some old repairs here too. Now I'm not surprised because I knew it was inevitable. But I just in the in fixing this one I found another, so that kind of we may have to continue digging. When I had to admit I was prepared to give it a try, but um, no. What I see here is not that bad, but it, it really it's someone else's at least this one has been soldered. So it's like a uh not a lineman's um but a stupider twist and then soldered in and so th I mean that's better than nothing but it's not even covered so that's a bit of an issue not burnt anew I don't think it was a part of this recent failure I think this is still working but uh yes I'm not applying power to this car uh, with some other things there which is unfortunate because I was anxious to see if we got any lights and shit well, there's no point. I'm just going to, uh, even if I put the thing in just to get the connectors and ignition work in, then, uh, no. We made a little bit of progress, but what what I what I just saw in when I wanted to test it uh, shows me that there's more to do. So, this is about three steps forward and one step back, so... That's a that's a decent ratio, I think, under under the grand scheme of things. All right, thanks, man. Bye.